It is time for another episode of Read Like a Lawyer, Troll Comment Edition. <laughs> Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and one of the things that we have to deal with on the platform are what are typically referred to as trollers, troll comments, trolls, etc. Now I am using the term tongue-in-cheek and somewhat loosely because I tend to find that people use the term inappropriately. People use the term troll as an all-encompassing label to group together everybody who makes a negative comment on their video. But there's more to being a troll than posting a negative comment, a critique, a criticism, something that the creator doesn't like. One does not get to create, make it accessible to the world, and then write off everybody who doesn't like what they've created as a troll. There are certain specific specific and very defining characteristics that allow for the distinguishing between a troll and a bona fide genuine negative comment. And let's get into it. But before we do, the context. Sometime over Christmas 2019, depending on what year you're watching this video, the CBC made its way back into the news again. International news, because apparently they deleted it out, deleted it, deleted it, deleted it. Deleted. Deleted, sorry. Apparently they deleted out Donald Trump's cameo from their broadcast of Home Alone 2 in 2019. When Twitter became aware of this fact, they went nuts. Everybody started tweeting how it was ridiculous that the Trump derangement syndrome TDS had reached such levels that the CBC was depersoning, removing Donald Trump's legacy from pop culture. The internet went wild, tweeters were retweeting, it made it onto US news outlets. The CBC's initial argument was that they had to delete certain scenes so that it would fit within the two hour time slot they had to air the movie. They do certain non-substantive edits that don't affect the plot so that they can fit in commercials and fit it within the allotted time slot. And I found something relatively interesting as a legal question in all of this as to what rights the broadcaster has in terms of the substantive edits that they make to a movie for which they have broadcast rights. And as I was looking into it, I found a few articles to the effect that, whoa, slow down a bit, it seems that the CBC actually made these edits as early as 2015, so as to undermine the argument that it might have been a politically motivated edit. And I make a vlog with as much factually accurate information as exists at the time, breaking it down certain legal aspects, shedding my insights if I have any, and I post it to the internet. So the CBC deleted Donald Trump's cameo from its broadcast of Home Alone 2 on Canadian television. Are you trying to start a war? Because this is how you start a war. Now because news is, by its very nature, a fluid river into which one can never step twice to quote Heraclitus, in the interim, shortly thereafter, right about the same time as I put up my video, the CBC came out with a statement saying, no, no, no guys, we made this edit as of 2014 when we acquired broadcast rights over the movie. No supporting documentary or video evidence, just a tweet and a couple of articles on CBC itself and The National. And with that statement, the CBC ostensibly quelled any concern that it was a politically motivated hit job. To the extent that the edit was allegedly done in 2014 when they acquired broadcast broadcast rights, Trump only announced he was running for president in June 2015, only elected in 2016, it could not have been politically motivated, right? That is a question of opinion to the extent that one agrees with the basic facts. But regardless, the CBC comes out with a statement that says, no, we actually made the edits in 2014 when we acquired broadcast rights. Just as a pure aside, I have a very hard time believing that this movie was aired in 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and nobody noticed that Donald Trump's cameo had been removed. It's not as though the Twitter world were not as rage sensitive then as it is today. Had it been airing for the last five years with the Donald Trump cameo removed, I guarantee you somebody would have noticed it somewhere on this earth. People are very Perceptive. Parentheses closed. So the CBC makes that announcement, and it is a materially relevant fact. Having become aware of that fact, which is somewhat different than the facts as I stated them in my video, I posted a follow-up correction video. So the CBC are now publicly claiming that the edits made to Home Alone 2 wherein they removed Donald Trump's eight-second cameo were in fact done in 2014 when the CBC acquired broadcast rights to the movie. Where do we go from here? Whether or not you think it's a massive difference if the edit was made in 2014 versus 2015, that's also a question of opinion. But as a pure matter of fact, this fact that the CBC alleges that the edit was made in 2014 did not exist at the time I made my video, to my knowledge. So being a responsible social media person, I post a follow-up vlog. And now we get into the comment. Now you're the butt of all jokes, and rightfully so. Maybe you should have done some research before jumping on the bandwagon yourself. You sound like a giant hypocrite. TDS really applies to Trump followers. And what distinguishes a troll comment from a regular comment? In my humble opinion, what makes a troll comment a troll comment is that the troll initiates a dispute not for the purposes of arriving at a mutual understanding, but rather for the purposes of continuing to promote the dispute itself. And that means shifting the object from the initial dispute to a new dispute, to a newer dispute, to another dispute, and it never ends. And that's what makes a troll a troll. They're not after resolution, they're after the dispute. So I read this comment and I'm hesitant because it makes some legitimate points. It 
makes a legitimate point in fact, but it makes illegitimate accusations of intentions. And that is another one of the distinguishing characteristics between a troll comment and a bona fide constructive criticism. When someone immediately attributes ill intent to the intentions of the person as opposed to merely dealing with the facts, you know where the conversation tends to go from there. Pure matter of fact, I was not necessarily wrong because the information didn't necessarily exist at the time, but there was a correction to be made. There is a difference between jumping on a bandwagon versus operating with the information you have at the time. Maybe you should have done your research is purely judgmental and it's ex post facto judgmental. To make the accusation maybe you should have done your research presupposes that the information that person has now existed at the other time. But regardless, by the time I read this comment I have already made my follow up video so I respond as follows. You probably should have watched my follow up vlog before making that comment. Smiley face, peace. Now this is something I've talked about repeatedly in previous vlogs but the written word tends to be read differently than the tone in which it was written. And reading my response I can see how someone might be able to read that response as pure sass and not the olive branch I intended it to be. But I do tend to think that most people with an open mind would read my response as an olive branch and not as a red hot fire poker. And this is the ultimate irony in all of this. I was just accused of jumping on the bandwagon, posting something too quickly without having full information at hand. The individual who made that accusation against me just did the exact same thing. Oni soit qui mal y pense. Check out my video on that if you haven't seen it, I'll link it right here. Subconscious, conscious projection, the individual making the accusation is guilty of the exact same thing. They saw the video with the benefit and hindsight of all the information that had come out since my video. And before even having seen that I had posted up a follow-up correction video, they make that comment accusing me of jumping on the bandwagon and promoting these false theories. That person with incomplete information just jumped on the bandwagon and made false accusations against me that I had already rectified. Now still, I don't know if this is a troll comment versus a legitimate criticism. But shortly thereafter, I go to my follow-up video and notice that the same person has posted a comment there, which reads as follows. I would have done the exact same video if they had deleted Hillary. And that's the problem that you don't get. The issue isn't that you're defending Trump. The issue is that you made accusations and supported a conspiracy narrative without checking your facts first. If you made the exact same video for Hillary, then you would still be wrong. Believe it or not, you're a media figure, albeit a small one, but a media figure nonetheless. And as such, using the tongue-in-cheek excuse for propagating misinformation just doesn't cut it. I mean, your previous video is still up and people still walk away from your video being misinformed, but I'm sure you won't take it down because you want that YouTube money. Another one of the defining characteristics of the troll is deliberate mischaracterization of the facts. The issue is that you made accusations and supported a conspiracy narrative without checking your facts first. Again, deliberately misstating that the very fact at issue only came out subsequent to the news stories. Also, referring to something as a conspiracy narrative is not to address the issue, it is to write it off entirely. It's not to engage with your interlocutor, it's to write them off and delegitimize them from the get-go. And the reality of the matter is that a lot of people can argue that it was totally immaterial as to whether or not the edit was made in 2014 or 2015 because it was relatively clear that Trump was already going to run for president as of 2014. But to write off the entire situation as a conspiracy narrative because one was one year off on the date of alleged information that had yet been evidenced by the person making the allegation is beginning to resemble someone who is seeking a fight and not an understanding. Believe it or not, you're a media figure, albeit a small one. That sounds like an insult. I mean, your previous video is still up and people still walk away from your video being misinformed. Bear in mind that the only information we're really talking about now is the alleged date of the edit as to whether or not it was 2014 or 2015. Everything else in the video is still accurate and insightful in my humble opinion. But again, a mischaracterization of the facts. True, the video is still up, but the correction video is the link in the pinned comment. The correction video is one of the end cards to that video. A ton of the comments in that video point to the fact that the CBC came out after the fact and alleged that the edits were made in 2014, not 2015. But even more fundamental than that, assume it is a bona fide factual mistake, an inexcusable one. Is deleting it the proper thing to do? If I delete a mistake, who learns from that mistake? And if I delete the mistake, then I have no doubt the dispute would then shift to the fact that I deleted the mistake to hide the fact that I made a mistake to pretend that I'm somehow perfect. And you know what? Here's the reality about mistakes. People do tend to delete their mistakes. People tend to delete their mistakes. People tend to pretend that they haven't made mistakes because in this day and age, apparently there's something shameful about making mistakes. You know who deletes their mistakes? Tyrants and dictators who believe there's some sort of shame in having been wrong. I made a mistake, better delete that from the history so that no one ever knows that I made a mistake. I've made mistakes before on the internet and I post correction videos as soon as I can thereafter, leaving the original up so that people know that I made the mistake and that the correction is up there. And I think it's a little weird that covering up and deleting your mistakes should be seen as a good thing and not a bad thing. Leaving your mistake up for the world to see is an act of honesty and transparency. Transparency. And that's not to say that I wouldn't take down a video if the circumstances so warranted. But I don't believe in deleting my mistakes because then ultimately nobody learns from them. 
but I'm sure you won't take it down because you want that YouTube money. Jumping straight to an accusation of intent. First of all, taking the video down won't impact the YouTube money that I may have already made on that video. In fact, I think taking it down would have been the more shameful thing to do because I make my money off my mistake, off my propagating false stories. Then delete the video as though I never did that in the first place. And we can now see through the progression of this short exchange how I think it was destined to be more of a troll critique than a bona fide critique. We went from the accusation of propagating misinformation, not knowing that I had already made the correction, to your correction wasn't good enough and you didn't take the video down. Had I taken the video down, then the argument would have probably shifted to, well, you didn't give the money back. If I somehow managed to cancel the video and give the money back to YouTube, the argument would probably shift to, well, you still made subscribers off that video propagating false information. There is a point at which you have to pick your battles in terms of what discourse you get into on the internet. There is in fact nothing more satisfying than productive and fruitful discourse with someone who disagrees with you entirely. But when you get the feeling that it is descending into a perpetually moving target of criticism and personal accusations, you know that you may have crossed the line from legitimate criticism to troll comment. Now on that note, I am trying to figure out what I want to be doing with my channel in the new year. Where do I want to go with the channel? Where do I want to go with myself as a brand? Where do I want to go with my life? I firmly believe that at the end of the day, most people just want to do good, be value added, and get recognition for that. I don't want to promote strife, and that was one of the biggest problems I had with the practice of litigation. Ultimately, very little about the actual practice of litigation was about resolving disputes. It was about fighting day in and day out, tooth and nail to the bitter end because of principles. And as good as I was at being a lawyer, I didn't feel that I was actually contributing to any net positive on this earth. And that's really what drove me to YouTube and to build this channel. And I want to continue to feel that my channel is continuing to do that, and if I don't think it's continuing to do that, then I might ask myself some serious questions. So stay tuned, 2020 should be fantastic. Hopefully we can continue this exponential growth and remain true to the core principles of my channel. With that said, if you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment in the section, you know, all that stuff. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. We got some good merch, keep common vlog on, vlog dog, all that sort of stuff. There's a PayPal link in there as well. Happy New Year, nothing but health and happiness in 2020 and following and now you know your vlog. Peace out. Peace out.